It's good. All right, now I'm gonna have to thanks, Terry. So uh, again, uh, welcome everyone. I'll have to redo this. I started talking and didn't hit the record. So a little preview of what we will be doing. I'll be going over the email first, but this is saltwater pattern called the EPT fiber. And I guess EPT is the brown and I have a green fiber with it as well. Uh, almost looks like doll's hair. Uh, and I'll be going through that. Uh, it's called for a saltwater uh, fly for, you know, fishing the flats. Uh, we were talking a little bit earlier about schnook. This would be really cool for a smaller schnook. Uh, I could see uh, the redfish going for this as well. But uh, for us around here, a large mouth and small mouth pattern would be perfect for this. Uh, but we'll get through the email first and then uh, we'll get to this. So in fishing news, again, regular season's coming up. Uh, these next two weekends, I'll be at Bennett. Uh, we do have to come up with an idea of fishing somewhere local, though. Uh, I was going to try to put out, there's a lot of things going on with Project Heating Water. It looks like JB is starting to look like it's going to open. So with that and a lot of stuff going on, I may ask for some help. Uh, just a lot going on and I'm having a little bit of hard time trying to keep up on stuff. So the help needed, uh, it's just gonna be minor stuff. Yep, and thanks Terry, I already see you waving. It's gonna be uh, easy stuff. Like Carl, I already got him, he's our rod building. So he's gonna be, if we do anything rod building, We'll have Carl. Uh, Roger is still out catching really big smallmouth. At least some of us are seeing the pictures. So he'll always be our uh, casting instructor. Uh, I'm just thinking if anyone else wants to help, you know, like we have these meetings. Uh, if I could have a couple people that want to tie here and there. So it's, you know, because for me, I got to prep and try to figure out what I'm doing and I still have a lot of emails and stuff uh, coming in for this casting national championship we're doing at uh, Bennett. And I still get a lot of inquiries uh, from veterans looking to join. So we could, you know, a couple people, if you want to tie one night a month, that'd be perfect. Uh, just kind of gives me a little break to kind of not have to prep. Uh, if someone's kind of interested, all you got to do, you know, for if somebody wants to be in charge of outings, just call a spot. You know, I'm trying to think, do we want to go to Lane Spring? Do we want to go to Bush Wildlife? Do we want to go Merrimack? Do we want to, where do we want to go? Even if I had one person said, Mick, next month we're going to Lane Spring. It's like, cool. And I don't have to think about it. We could just go. So it's just going to be a little minor things like that because what if I think JB is going to open up. So we're going to have to, you know, we'll have, if we go back to Monday nights there, you know, we'll be doing that. And then I'll have to ask John if he doesn't mind if just St. Louis tags along on uh, Zoom on Thursdays with them. So it's almost like us kind of joining them. Yeah, so, you're always welcome, Mick. You know, yeah, yeah, I know. And, you know, it's just that might even help you guys, too. It's like, cool, St. Louis is tying tonight. <laughs> you know, and it's, you know, make it a little bit easier because I know if we're doing Mondays at JB, it's going to get real busy. So. Things coming on, we'll do some fishing. Like I said, I just have some things planned that I have to be out in Lebanon the next two weekends. So, but if you guys are around and want to go fishing, you got my number, call me, you know, I'll meet up with you guys. But then I got to figure out some local stuff around here, whether we want to do Lane Spring or Bush Wildlife or some other pond around us, that would be fun. Uh, Carl and I already talked about this when we were talking about that Men the Line movie, because even Carl was like, Mick, I'm trying to find it. And I started looking into it. Uh, you know, everyone wants to see Guardians of the Galaxy and the Fast and the Furious and Batman and this and that. But I guess no one was in too, not a lot of people interested in veterans on fly fishing. So it didn't do well at the box office and it's already been pulled from theaters. Yeah, ours was only ours only ran for three days here in Omaha. It was, uh, and yeah. I didn't get a chance to see it, unfortunately. Yeah, it was. They were supposed to play one month in my local, you know, around St. Louis. 
and they lasted three days. And when no one was showing up at the theater, do it, they were just showing the movie with an empty theater. They pulled it. So that went quick. So I still playing on, uh, Walt called me and we're like, when it comes on DVD or something, you know, I could find a little BFW hall or something and we could kind of play it on a big screen or something and just kind of watch it together. So, uh, I heard it was a great movie. It was just, you know, not a lot of interest in it. So, uh, yeah, the release date could not have been worse. I mean, you know, they, the, there was a brand new Marvel movie come out and I forget what the name, the flash, and that was all kinds of big stuff and a couple of others. Yeah, it was just a terrible weekend to release it. Yeah. So, again, yeah, so it was like a shame. But we'll try to find something and we could watch a screening of it. We could go to VFW or Legion Hall and watch it. Uh, rod building. Uh, we still have some out uh, of our team. They need to finish up their rods. Uh, we'll get to that soon. Lee is one of them. Scott, and we you got to work on yours too, right? Or are you done with working? Yeah, with I still got one more section to do. Okay. So again, we'll start working on those, you know, create a weekend or something that right? we could get together. Lee, yours is almost done. You probably just need to put another quick code on it because that uh, resin just never cured up. So yours is just about done. Just throw some Sally Hansen. Yeah, you could do that, or I could mix up some of the same epoxy, the two-part that we we're doing, but I got better stuff that's actually curing. So those are almost done. Uh, the other thing I want to do is, like, we talked a little bit about JB. That looks like it'll be coming back. I don't know exactly when, but things are starting to open back up. Uh, we did talk about when we do JB, that'll be fly time, but we will try to also do once a month uh, at a library like we've been doing because when we're at JB, a lot of the inpatient uh, uh, veterans uh, have first dibs with working with us veterans. So uh, you might not be able to grab a table, but I still want to do in person with this group that we've had for the past three years. So we'll still be doing that. I'll get with Roger and figure out uh, a rod casting lesson we'll come up with that we're getting in kind of the heat so a lot of it we want to kind of do fishing especially like lane spring where it's nice and cool uh still have a lot of fly tying equipment in the storage if you need anything let me know uh, this zoom call is permanent it's the same meeting id and password every week uh calendar at a glance um, the only thing I, you know, I got to get in some fishing for us for uh, July and August. So I'll have to come up with some dates for that. If again, if there's a place that you want to go, let me know. Even by just throwing out a location that helps me out where I'm like, all right, cool. I don't have to think about it. I'll just pick a date and we'll go. Uh, I do kind of like the idea of Lane Spring after I saw Terry and his buddy sitting in lawn chairs in the yeah. spring. <laughs> I was there too. You were there too. Just yeah. sitting in the spring. I was like, that's awesome. I, I just put the chair in the spring, sit down, and you know, cast like we were doing at Jefferson Lake. That was kind of fun. Well, uh, when I saw him, I thought the water was like really deep when I walked up there and he's in his waist in water. I'm like, man, that's deep water. And he stood up. I'm like, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, we're just fishing off our chairs. Uh 28th of August through 1 September. Again, that's a national casting competition at Bennett. Um, not sure if they need me or not, so that's hit or miss if I'll be there or not. September 8th is Vets Fish Free at Montauk. Uh, would love to go there, and I know some people love fishing there and actually do better than me, so that would be kind of fun. Uh, 1 October Union uh Missouri Vets Fishing Day. So Scott will be having more info on that. And then I haven't heard anything on the Vets Fish Free at Roaring River, but uh, that's usually a trip. I think that's like a five and a half hour drive from uh, St. Louis if you want to go out that way. So uh, I'll let you guys know, but that's a tough one to make. Um, last RV stays? Do I or... 
Do we uh, have any RV stays coming up? I know you already have your place for business. Yeah, anytime we could do a Bennett, you know, trip. And if I don't know if you could sneak out uh, this weekend and next weekend, uh, Marge, you plan on being out there. So if you could sneak out there, even if it's at Hidden Belly Outfitters, mm -hmm. to find a spot. If you're like, yeah, I'll go, you know, then uh, just we'll be there. You know, it's uh, I got to do a little work from home on Friday, but. I plan on uh, being on a spring at the whistle on Friday morning, fish for an hour and a half, then go back, do my official work for a couple hours, and then later that evening fish, and then same on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, Margie is going to then stay the whole week and work from home out there, and she's just going to stay out there the whole week. So That's in your new place, right? Yeah, it's in a, our new-to-us place, so... Uh, we're just kind of slowly renovating it. I'm hoping by December we'll all be done with the renovation. And then while we go there, it's just enjoy it. So okay. and it'll be a two bedroom. So if anyone wanted to sneak out and needed a bed, we've got one. Okay. So, yep. Uh, definitely the last thing on here, but absolutely not the least. And I'm glad Lee came on. So you could kind of attest to this that uh, mm -hmm. Project Healing Water uh, Omaha Zoom meeting last, you know, I keep on telling you guys they meet same time on Thursdays from six to seven and they have good meetings and Lee was able to join the last one and uh, you got to see firsthand they've got some good meetings and good guest speakers and we already kind of talked uh, about how uh, that was one of the best meetings I've seen in a long time where, as I said, he took, he said 20 of the most basic things you need to do or need to know about fly tying. If you could learn these, you could pretty much tie any fly. And so then he took the next hour and a half going through each of those steps. And it was pretty amazing. He, I learned a lot. So I think Lee, you liked it. And then, uh, uh, John said, if you go on YouTube and look for flat water fly fishers, mm -hmm. he has that recording of what we watched on Thursday. So again, I'll put that out there on my next email stating, you know, this is a good video to go watch. And he was teaching the very basics on how to tie a fly. Something yep. I'm not too up to speed on yet. Yeah, and you think, you know, he even mentioned it. You see some really good tires tied, and it's like, you know, wickety bam, it's done. But he really takes his time <clears> and explains, <throat> you know, why? every step why you're doing it. And he, he had his video set up where it wasn't a tie, but it was to instruct on how to fly tie. And that was so the hook was bigger, and he used like a thicker cord so you could kind of see how he was uh doing everything even you know the material that he would use he might use like a bright yellow malibu with red thread so the contrast you could actually see what he was doing so yeah. even though yeah he was tying flies he really wasn't he was just going through step by step and it was absolutely outstanding so so again uh i'll put it out there for sure and there, John just put it out in chat. And so there is a link right to YouTube if you want to see that. And again, if you have an hour and a half and you really do like tying flies, but even if you think, you know, I know it all, check this out. I'm, I'm sure you'd be, you'll learn something. It was really neat. It's kind of neat to watch him how he was doing a whip finish with it's his so fingers nice. real quick. So. It's been associated. Sorry. My bad. Oh. <laughs> so <laughs> no worries. So uh, that was all for the emails. Uh, again, uh, I'll come up with something to tie for next week. But I think after that, yeah, because the next week will be the 26th. But uh, the week after that will be July 3rd, which is the 4th of July weekend. And I'll still be in Lebanon. And their internet there is poor at best. Mm -hmm. So I don't think I'll be able to hold the meeting unless somebody actually, I could get it started, but someone else would actually have to run it, which I think we're just going to call it a day off. And uh, we're usually here every Monday anyway. And uh, 
enjoy it with family and make it a long weekend. Cause I think most people are taking that third off so they could have a four day weekend. So just a heads up. All right. So with that, I will get to the fly time. Hopefully you could see this. Let's see if I can bring this over and I'm going to pin myself. So that way you could see that. So again, this is the EPT fiber fly. And the EPT is actually this brown fiber. Um, it's all set up for salt water, but I had the kit and this looks like it would be just as good for a bait fish uh, for largemouth or a smallmouth bass. So I thought I'd give it a try. I'll call out some of the uh, materials as I go through. Uh, I think the hook size is a, a number eight, but very stubby and short. So it's very thick, which is kind of very typical of saltwater flies. It looks like a 2X short, is it, Mick? Yeah, it's all they told me in the kit, and I bought this as a kit, and hopefully you could see hook, size 8, whatever, tar 800. Maybe if I huh. hit it backwards, yeah, so. No, nope, it's backwards now. Backwards now. But it's weird because you can see it says six on that size, but an eight. Oh. It's magic. So hook tar 800. And this thing is just a very heavy gauged, shorter hook. In the instructions, they kind of, you know, they say just put a thread wrap down. So I will as well. Uh, a lot of this fly is you're not building on top or bottom as much as Putting a lot of stuff on the side. Um, in the kit, they did give me some uh, uh, lead solder, so I will use that. Uh, if you're fishing salt water and you're doing the flats, flats are any almost kind of like Bennett, if you want to say, but for uh, salt water where it's no more than I'd say four foot would be deep but it's usually around three foot. So you don't have to worry about it uh, trying to get it down so much. But, you know, if it's deeper area, you might want to put on some wraps and I will try to do that. So I will put on some wraps. Again, this hook is already huge. I don't see this having any, any issues of actually trying to sink, but I guess if you wanted to get down a little bit further quicker, you could do some rent. And you don't have to go to the bend of the hook on this because with it being a streamer pattern, most of your tie-in point is well ahead of the mid rate or mid shank position and nothing towards the back. So Mick, I couldn't find that particular fly, but I could find a TMC 800, and that's a uh, 1X strong, 1X short. That would be the 1X short looks, I would agree, a, you know, strong, holy smokes. You could probably go shark fishing with this thing. The next... It's, they uh, say it's, good. It's, it's good for permit and schnook and tarpon and a whole bunch of other things. So Yeah, I could see even smaller tarpon would go nuts for this, you know, and where we're kind of talking a little bit about tarpon fishing, not uh, a couple minutes before we went. And uh, I could see the smaller ones that kind of sit in the estuaries, you know, the okay. coves and all that, which are around three to three feet would be perfect for this. So the first material I'm using is uh, like, uh, it's not a crystal flash, Trying to see if I can find the, what do they call this? Some kind of floral fiber, but it's just almost looks like a crystal flash. And I just haven't, would that be about four lengths out? And I'm going to tie this in, but the way I'm going to do this 
and I'm going to put two loose wraps, but then I'm going to kind of do it on reverse where you can see it. Try to put it on the side. You know, I'm not going on top. But I want to keep it on the side because with this, I want to keep everything on the side. So now I'm going to wrap on my side, but I'm tying all this in. Wow, that's kind of, I might double this over real quick. So that's a lot of material that I'm losing out on. And look cool. I wasn't planning on that, but there's a lot of material hanging out. So I'm just gonna cut that out. that it looks better. While you're doing this, eventually you will kind of give it a haircut. That's kind of bright. Can you guys see that or do I need to darken that a little? It's fine. It's fine. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to put in some crystal flash and I'm going to actually use some of the green that I had from uh, last week. Uh, I did one. They gave me in the kit just a normal crystal flash, which was just a pearl kind of color. Uh, but the green, I, I just wanted to try, and it looked really cool. And so what I'm going to use this flash for is, you know, the anatomy of uh, these flies, of these fish, I'm creating a lateral line. So again, I'm going to kind of put it on top with a couple loose wraps, but then hopefully you can see that. I'm going shimming it to the side. And then I'm going to wrap it to do this side. So for the most part, everything on this fly is going on the sides because it will be kind of a flat fly at the end. So again, anything hanging off the side, you could trim off early if you wanted, but let me stay a little bit. Okay, next part. Again, as I said, here is that EPT fiber, and it's almost like a doll here. I won't do the green for sure because I have green flash, and then you can't see the with the background being it, but it almost, it looks like hair. It almost looks like human hair. And I'm just gonna take a clump of this out. This was ever a best way to describe this. This looks like doll hair. And all I'm doing is picking out a chunk out of this. The backside looks good because that looks, un, you know, even fray. Kind of when we work with the marabou, we kind of we don't want to cut with the scissors. We kind of pinch with our uh, thumb uh, fingertip. That way, you don't get a look like that. So with this, I just kind of try to tug it out a little bit and make it a little uneven. Because I don't want it to look like it has a, a haircut. So that looks better. So what they want you to do is with this, is cut this in half. And the first part, I want to line up, be about the length that I plan on doing it. And this, I'm doing a pinch wrap because I do want to keep this up on top. And I'm just kind of bring this up that nose. Now, the one thing I want to do is because you want to keep this flat. One thing I noticed when I was tying this that created an issue is if I would go too far with it, like here, 
and I brought it down, it would then get too tight and it wouldn't look right. Lucky thing with this is that uh, uh, lead uh, uh, wire I have there, the wrap is keeping me from doing that, which is kind of cool. So we'll cut that first section off. Again, now I will put the second portion on. Again, just trying to marry it up. Looks good. Cutting an angle to really keep this up at a nice level. Is it crowding the eye? I, it looks like it, but that eye is so big on this hook. So I'm almost kind of, if you're familiar with a Clouser minnow, you could actually get close to the eye, but as you could see, I could still almost put, see if I could work this. Remember the silly legs? I bet, yeah, I could probably put a silly leg maybe through this if I can. Maybe I will can't. I really wanted to try that because you could just a silly lake is like pushing a wet noodle. Um, but here's like a bodkin. Okay. I put it right through. So uh, if you could put a your bodkin through it, you you could get your line through it. You could actually see the you're fine there. Just like I'm glad you mentioned that because that was part of the training class we heard on Thursday where he mm -hmm. said, always give yourself an eye. So right where I'm, that's cool. You could almost see the thread really good there. If you're starting, you know, and I don't have the material, that's as far as you want to go close to that eye or you will crowd it. Uh, so absolutely good point based on what we heard on Thursday. With this one, you could kind of get away with it a little bit just because of the hook, you know. But especially when you're using, uh, trying to build up a trout fly that we use or a pan fish, you know, the smaller flies, absolutely kind of where I had that hanging there, you could see it. You want to leave a whole hook eye length behind it. That way uh, you're not crowding it. This one, I could kind of get away with it. And it's just because based on, this super strong hook. I'm getting a little bit more flash out. This is just straight silver. And again, I'm folding this in half. Well, the fish don't care if they can see the eye, then I assume. No, it's, you know, the hook eye, that means nothing to them. Okay. But, you know, when you'll see, I'll put regular eyes on this. Eyes is, are a good attractant for fish. I mean, you know, that's something that a lot of the predator fish will always usually try to go after is, you know, they look for the eye, it's the head of the fish, and it's going to then go towards your mouth. Mm -hmm. If you're familiar, well, because we're talking about, you know, this being a saltwater pattern, if you're... Uh, know what the red fish is or red drum it's kind of a it almost the shape of a carp bronze and colored but on the tail it has a big black spot on it and it's actually for the defense because other predatory fish could even like big tarpon or uh, uh, sharks will see that and they spot on that knowing that if they bite the head they usually get the fish and so it's kind of a lure for them where if they try to bite the tail they could then take off and so you know this hook eye uh you're not going to see but now i'm actually going to put on some real eyes and so that's always been a good attractant to it i can find my wood finishing tool there you are so at this point, I'm gonna tie this off.
And now I'm just going to try to finesse this a little bit because I want this to be kind of flat. And then when I put the eyes on it, we'll hold it in place and try to get that flat look I'm looking for. So that's what I'm kind of looking for on that side, where it kind of flattens it out. I'm going to do the other side real quick. Want to make it symmetrical. So I'm kind of looking at this. I'll let you guys judge if it looks good once I'm done. The fish will think it's cockeyed. So. Yeah, there's something <laughs> wrong with the fish. So now if you just left it like that, those would fall off. So where did my Sally Hansen's go? There it is. Now I'm going to kind of coat this well with it to keep those eyes in place. I'll even make sure I get those thread wraps around the eye. And I'm going to really cover this. I don't want those eyes coming out. So this is just kind of gluing it in place. You could get a little sloppy with this. It'll be just fine. So that's about it. Now I will try to, usually you'd want to try to let this dry. But from here, if you wanted, you could kind of give it a little bit of a haircut, make it a little bit more streamlined. Just be a little careful on what you do. So once you cut the material off, it's gone. You can't put it back on. But there you go. There's a nice little bait fish. Actually, probably tied this one way too quick because we have a lot of time left over. <laughs> Hey, Mick, a question. Yes. Uh, how do you decide whether to use Sally Hansen's or UV? Uh, right now, it's real easy for me because my UV, which is I use this, and maybe let me pull this out, and maybe you could see my UV is gunked up pretty bad. So I got to get, I don't know if you could, it's too hard to see, but it's almost like crystallized. And so... Even on the inside, it's all caked in there. It should be almost looking, you know, like the Sally Hansen's. You could kind of see it, you know, clear liquid. You know, the viscosity of it is pretty good. I don't know what happened to this, but this is pretty junk. And i rather use this. I do like Solares. I don't know what happened to mine, but that's it going in the trash. I have to order a new one. But if you ask me, what do I prefer? That's solar as because you just do that. You know, if that was solar as, you know, I just come in with the UV light and it's cured. So I prefer uh, solar as I'd say 90% of the time. I'm trying to think of what could be the other 10%, but I always hate to deal in absolutes that I will only use that. But I absolutely prefer that solar as. So again, if you can get that, it's just for some reason I got a bad bottle. Maybe so it's uh, just a matter of preference. It's a matter of preference. And why I like this is because you know you hit it with the UV for five seconds and you could touch this fly. You could even fish with it. Right now, I've got to let that dry for at least 20 minutes, you know, and but uh I absolutely prefer the solar as. Uh, what about durability? Durability, I would almost probably say the UV uh, resin is stronger. Uh, Sally Hansen's is a, I think it's uh, is it a polyurethane. I think uh, the epoxy is stronger than polyurethane. So 
it will be a stronger cure, you know, and it's quicker. It's, you know, it's Sally Hansen's has always been, uh, you know, a, the backbone of fly time. So I've always, I have it. I'll always have a bottle of it. Uh, what I do like to use it for is uh, if I'm doing my nymphs, I will always kind of give a little coat and then I, you know, will uh, wrap a couple and, you know, finish with it, especially those uh, uh, thread jigs I like because uh, those thread jigs work wonders at Bennett, but after a while they actually start on frame because uh, the teeth and the uh, trout will start fraying them out. So sometimes I like to put a little Sally Hansen on it, but again, you could get away with uh, UV resin. And there are different uh, manufacturers. You know, you don't have to get the solar as it's just the brand i like i've tried several and some of them kind of leave a tacky feel and then uh the only way i could get it to fully dry is i take them outside in the sun and let them sit there for a couple minutes and then they do better but the uh, solar as indoors with the light it's dry as a bone Nick, before, you throw, before you throw that solar as away uh try putting it in a bowl of of warm water okay uh, there's a couple of other recipes that guys have come out with on, if you Google it, I've even heard of people putting them in the microwave. I have not tried that. Okay. So you might want to do some research, you know, before you think about tossing that out. Yeah, I'll try doing that. It's I have it. And I mean, if I was going to toss it, what's the worst that'll happen is, um, <laughs> it's, you know, I throw it out a second time. So, that stuff's not cheap. <laughs> no, it's not. And that's the tough thing about that is these little bottles, depending on where you go, if you go to a fly shop, they're going to charge you 25 bucks. You go on a shelf life. What's that? Do they have a shelf life? Uh, for as much as I use this, it, I, it should be fine. Okay. But yeah, I will try, you know, I'll do a Google search and see if anyone says anything on you know, microwave or something like that. And I've heard someone say that. It's just, I wasn't thinking about it and uh, I was just going to buy new, but I think I'll give it a try for sure. I mean, like I said, if it goes bad, it's I was going to throw it out anyway. All right. So yeah. there, John's got it. Something, let me... Stuff they use in 3D printers. Uh, this is, I forget how much I've got here. But I fill it up lot. into bottles like this. <laughs> yeah. That gives you some idea. I got enough UV here to last me the rest of the rest of my life and your life and everybody else's life in the in the in Project Healing Waters. But you can get it on YouTube. So you can get that hey, bottle right, right there for about twenty bucks. Wow. Okay. I'm gonna... And it works really, really well. I have I I didn't find Al Be Al Beatty put me onto this. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that he uses. So okay. What is that again? Any cubic? It's called any cubic, and I got this from uh, Amazon. Be careful. Notice down here it says clear. Where is that? Does it turn? Does it turn yellow on you after a while? Or does, uh, does I it haven't stay had pretty it, clear. No, I haven't had to do that. But it comes in different colors too. So if you've got druthers, if you want red heads or black heads or chartreuse, you know you can get any color you want. Yeah, that's pretty reasonable. Yeah, I thought so. It's, uh, and as as little as I use, yeah, I get a charge, Nick. You say Sally Hansen's is the backbone. Well, you know, Sally Hansen's has only been used by fly tires for about 10 years. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> for that, we use something called head cement. <laughs> yeah. And it's, you know, for me, it's, you know, I haven't been around that long. But yeah. for Sally Hansen's, that was probably the first purchase I made when it came to Fly time is like you need to have that. That's like yeah. Amy introduced it to me, and uh, that's several years ago now. But uh, before then, I always used uh, head cement, which is just no, nothing, not a whole lot different than just uh, a clear varnish. Yeah, so I'll give it a try. I see it. I just see a bunch of colors, like you yeah. said. You know, that's kind of neat because I've seen a lot of people when they do. Uh, I forgot the name of those, like chromids or something like that. They actually put like a colored cap on it. 
Uh, but yeah, yeah, right there, I see $25.99. So any yeah. the 3D printer resin looked identical to what you held up. Here yeah, make sure you a small bottle. Yeah. Wait a second. I've got it handy here. Oh, yeah. Because if you're not careful what you buy, you could wind up with something like this. Okay. This is the little one I was just showing you. And this is the one I bought the first time. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And I think I'm looking to show the front of the first uh, the one because I want to see the up a little bit. Let's see, because they actually show, yep, that's the one I'm looking at, because it's the one. See what it says here? Yeah. One, one kilogram. kilogram. Yeah, and that's what I'm looking at. You could get the one kilogram for that's five grams. clear is 19 bucks. Yeah. So, unless you want to supply all the healing waters. You see, this one's great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then for the next 100 years. Get to five hundred gram. <laughs> I know you gotta you gotta watch some of that. I, I used to use Loom, and yeah. it would turn a milky white after uh, it would uh, keep it in your fly box for about a year or so. It would it would turn to a different uh, an off color. You know, I would I, I wouldn't think I would have that issue because it's uh, you know three D printers. So uh... yeah, that would be great. Yeah, so I don't know. It's it's worth the experiment. I uh, I haven't I only been using it a couple of months, but uh, so it's going to take a year before I run the test. So yep. yeah, I'm going to give it a try. But I'm going to yep. do that. I'll, I'll tie up some flies and stick them in a fly box someplace and just leave them set for a year. And this time next year, we can come back and say, "Hey, what's it look like?" Yeah, I tied up about six dozen copper johns one time, and I think within about two weeks. They turned a milky white on top of them. Ooh. That's a shame. Yeah. Copper drones are tough flies. They're a little expensive, and they have them go bad on you. They're hard to tie. Yep. Those tails drive me crazy. Those bio tails. Yeah. So there's a finished product. So it's about dried well, up now. So. Add that to the box, and so looks good. Yeah, it's a fun little thing. I'll take it to some of the. There's a lake near my house that has a bunch of smaller, large mouth. I don't. The biggest one might be a couple pounds. I think that'd be perfect for it. So that's all I had. I don't know if anyone has anything. I'm trying to think of what's going on. This week, Mike's going to be tying uh, a salmon fly. Uh, oh, the rusty rat. The rusty rat. Rusty and, rat. So that's kind of a, a, a cousin to the one you just tied. So it should be interesting. Yeah. And so if you had fun with this, guys, uh, I'm kind of happy Lee got on. So he could kind of say, yeah, the home Omaha hour, you know, is really good. That was probably one of the best uh, – how are you? Real, real good presentation. Yeah. 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 Thanks, John. Oh. Yeah. Me, thank Mike Kelly. I just, I started. He takes, he runs with it. Mike is, uh, he's the guy that's put all these zooms together. It's, uh, it's all, all the credit goes to Mike. Yeah. And so that's kind of, you know, like mm -hmm. I said, even because of what JB coming up and all that. Kind of how, like how John has it, you know, John's a program lead, but Mike does a Zoom call. So that's where I said I might be reaching out for help. Things are starting to pick up. I'm looking at my inbox and that's got a lot of people looking for me. Yeah, you know, it, it, you're just getting into it, Nick. Wait till I usually spend an hour to two every single morning on emails and doing different things. So, yeah, there's a lot of work. I absolutely enjoy it. Yep. I just feel bad at times that I don't have more time in the day to catch it all, <laughs> but there's yep. always stuff going on. Uh, and it's you know, getting that, more busy, a lot, a lot worse in the last two years since the, yeah. you know, the program is expanding very rapidly and uh, 
that's creating a lot of pressure coming down the down the hill on us. So yeah, which is no no problem because that means you know, I had seven new vets sign up for our program this last week. Oh wow! So, yeah, yeah, I usually it's, it's that, crazy. Yeah, huh? weird. You guys don't see that, but yeah, we get people in St. Louis. They sign up and. You know, I might not hear from them again, you know, but, you know, then it's, you know, we get those that sh stick around like Lee and Scott and, yep. you know, we have our then tight little group. So we're always good, but, you know, I'm looking, you know, I got a Corey Wright. Uh, I know you're blessed to have Margie right alongside of you. Yeah. Yes. And she said she was going to help. She's going to probably... I told her she didn't have to, you know, because it still stays in with the household then. But I think she wants to be like an alternate program lead, you know, because cool. she does help out a lot. So I think she wants to become my alternate, you know, and I think you're an assistant. assistant. Yeah, that's why I mean assistant. I guess an alternate assistant. So she'll be my uh, assistant PL because she's like really wants to be part of this it's mm -hmm. i know she would be on but she's like i'm the only girl i'm like it doesn't matter <laughs> it's like you're a fly fisherman it doesn't matter it's tell her she's the den mother <laughs> yeah the den mother and there you go you know, Marky would be, Marky be great for this that position oh she would she's you know yeah. gets along with everyone and when i'm usually that first uh mayfly uh time which is our uh yeah. Vets fish free. She's out there running around helping me do it. So I know she could do it. It's just, you know, she she's yep. like, I don't know what I'm doing. It's like, I don't think most of us do. We just wing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, just we don't. You know, we're faking it. We just yeah. do it as it comes along. But uh, yeah, yeah. I've, in fact, I've got another outing this Saturday at the. I've got about thirty vets going to show up at a lake, and we're going to go fishing this Saturday for. A, our Naran tournament. Yeah. And so, like I said, I'm heading out this weekend and Friday morning, I've already kind of decided it's, I'm going to take out the 10 Kara. I got the different line for it. So uh, I'm going to do that in the morning because that's just, the setup's pretty easy. You know, it's, yeah. you know, you just set it up real quick and you run out there and I could fish for an hour, have a good time and I think the whistle goes off at 6.30 and I can even be done by 7.30 and I don't even think the earliest other person that shows up to my job is like 9. I could fish a couple hours and still be the first guy in. So, <laughs> yeah. So anything else, you know, we were kind of talking about I definitely want to get a local trip in. Uh, so I don't know if we want to do a lake. That kid gets can get hot, especially around bush wildlife. There's no shade. So I'm thinking if you guys want to shoot out the lane spring again, that was kind of fun. Uh, Lee, I didn't know if you got to fish there a whole lot when you were with Terry, but uh, you could do did some baiting. What's that? Practice. I did a lot of practice casting. So that's a, good, that's a good spot. Right when you walk in is probably the one place I catch the most fish. It's a little bit deeper there, but I just kind of cast to the other side and it's, you're either going to catch a, a trout or one of those creek chubs. Yeah, you got to see all the bruises on my arm for not keeping my hand in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Left hand in your pocket. Yeah. Yeah. And so though that's a fun, you could kind of wait it a little bit. Uh, it's a little waiters, yeah and i'm trying to, mm. for the waiters for you and me i can't find the size that i got from cabela's they don't make anymore no, not the big like, fellas huh? not mm. for us big guys and so you know what we got the money and i you've been around and we're gonna have to do the sims custom so i'm gonna have we're gonna have to really measure you up good okay it's gonna be we're tough gonna, What's Things that? The supply chain, even though it's getting better. I mean, I, I'm still waiting on uh, two weight line for one of my guys' uh, flyer, flight, you know, rods that he just built. I can't, and it's been on back order for six months. So, yeah, wow. I just ordered 15 waiting sticks for our club. Mm -hmm. So, those will be coming out, and it's, you know, for 
the people that are active, yes, you're going to get them. And then, you know, supposedly it's like when you're done with them, return them, but mm -hmm. return them in five, six years. <laughs> if you're done or if they get broken, let me know. Uh, so, yeah, it's I'm kind of looking at uh, it's June, but July in a couple of weeks. So I need to kind of burn some of that uh, stuff, make sure we're getting some T-shirts and stuff like that. You know, it's it, that was all donated to us to use for us, the veterans. And uh, I want to make sure we're keeping up with what people thought we were I was going to do with it. So you got to start spending because otherwise they'll take it from you. Exactly. So, uh, hey. So when do you, you're going to be, you're going to be tied up the Saturday, the 24th and uh, Saturday, the first, right? Yes. Next? And uh, what is, what is, I'm thinking about um, who's a Valley. That's a fun who's, one. Who's a Valley. Uh, a couple of things. One, you can wade. Two, you can get a place right there on the river so you don't have to, you know, like Lane Springs is great, but you got to walk up, you know, about two blocks, yeah. you, know, you know, carrying all your crap and stuff like that. And and they have uh, a place where you can eat at Hoosaw Valley and there's some shade trees right there. So I'm thinking, you know, that might be a good place, a good summer waiting Place. Yes, and Let me... would do some fly casting, uh, and uh, instruction, and even though there's all the kayaks and all the other stuff, we you know we've done it before, caught some fish and cooled down, and I don't know. You you just want to catch some more gar. That's yeah, right. the gar. So the it's gar. Big yeah, there's gar. yeah they got gar fish there. Uh, that the lake terrier the size of its mouth. They're little. <laughs> they're, <laughs> yeah. they're, I think they're yeah. called spotted. Yeah. Uh, uh, Westover Farms. So those of you that are familiar with Westover Farms out here, their spring ends up right there. So you could actually kind of be walking and you're like, okay, this is warm. Yeah, dry, dry creek. Dry creek. And man, you will get hit with that cold spring water. You're like, Whoa, well, and there, there is there is a spring that comes up at that junction. Okay. So, so you got cold spring water and you got a cold spring that comes up right there. Yeah. So there's a, probably the biggest uh, smallmouth that I've seen caught on a fly rod. I know it wasn't big by what, you know, I saw Roger catch it lately, but Jim Saracino, I just shown up, hey, everyone, I'm here. And all of a sudden, there's Jim with his rod bent in half, and he pulled up at least a 12 to 14 inch uh, smallmouth right there. I'm like, where'd that come from? Because usually you see smaller fish running around, but uh, that's just a fun place. That's, you know, we'll picnic there. It's just a good time to hang out, chat. Uh, if you want to practice your casting, that's always a great place. Uh, I think that's where. Uh, Terry, you know, he goes, Hey, I want to see your three weight. And right. we had a blast with it. And you're like, next time I saw you, you had the whole rod set up. Uh, I'll bring my Ted Kerr out there if you guys want to play with it. It's uh, you know, it's a fun time. Are you gonna catch any monsters out there? Probably not, but it's just a good time. Uh, because I think the bluegill that are out there are, are panfish, I'll call like pumpkin seed or something like that they're beautiful you know it almost looks like they should be a saltwater fish so 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 saturday or sunday yep i'll have to look uh i'm looking either the 8th or 9th or 15th or 16th and i have to see i gotta double check my calendar because i know uh exactly scott <laughs> with margie uh but uh, I got to see, because I do have that mayfly to take care of, and I just need to double check. I'll be in New Jersey from the 30th to the 30th. So. Oh, okay. So I don't have the, I got to 
put my Mayfly stuff in there because I've already missed two uh, uh, meetings with them, and they only do six. So uh, I'll have to double check that. But yeah, let's do who's uh, that's a good time because we rent the two uh, uh, camping spots there. They're primitive sites, but you know, if you want to have a little campfire, there's a campfire ring. Uh, for sure, we'll cook out. Uh, yeah, well, it's that's just a good time. So, uh, we'll is work that a day that. trip? Yeah, it's a day trip. You know, it's now if you wanted to, you know, there's a campground spot if you wanted to stay there. You know, by all or means, cabins. Yeah, they got cabins. It's it's probably a, pretty busy, but yeah, yeah, it's uh, they're known for their flow trips. So they've got. You know, places that are family only. And then there's the party central. Mm -hmm. They try to put to the side. And uh, it's just like a big fun camping area. You know, we go there for, and they know us. You know, we've been there enough times where it's like, hey, we're, you know, and I think they have us in their little computer. It's like, oh, yeah, Project Healing Waters. You guys always like those two spots that no one else takes mm -hmm. because it's right by the, launch for the canoes and no one wants those and i think we're the only ones though that rent those every year so we get both spots they give us it like for 15 bucks each so it's like 30 bucks we got two spots it gives us plenty of room for uh parking uh we'll do some casting and fly time if we want so it sounds good so i will so so, so the people so the people the people here. Lee's going to be gone. Yep. Jenny, Carl, John, Dave. Uh, what's your availability for July? Um, I'm in Omaha. Sorry. <laughs> I think I'm good. Uh, the uh, the the weekend of the fifteenth, sixteenth, seventeenth. That's my anniversary. So. Uh, if I want to see number 54, I, I can't go. <laughs> so I'll probably. So maybe the eighth. I would yeah. say almost the ninth because uh, unless Scott just got off, Scott works for the post office. So he gets Sundays off. That's it. And so I don't know. Sundays. if he's... Okay. I'm looking at the ninth. Okay. And that's the first one I'll double check. I just got to check a couple other dates. To confirm that the nine should be open, I think it is, and then uh, we should be okay. Nick, any, yes. anytime you need help or any kind of volunteer uh, work you're looking for, I, I'll be there. So I appreciate you know, yeah, it. Me too. Yeah, put, no. put my name down. Just give me a call or text me. Let me know ahead of time. Yep, okay. and I, you know, especially if we start, you know, if we open up JD again, it's going to get busy, and that's where I'll need help. You know, where are know. we? Are we still going to be on a Monday night at JB? Yes, and so my guess, and I'm, you know, we kind of talked a little bit with John that uh, Monday night would be JB, and it would either be fly tying or casting lesson and casting lesson is usually uh roger but anyone else could help and then we just kind of grab a table and you know the flies we tie for those are very simple you know lee i know you like your beetles the foam beetles they love doing stuff like that you know we're not trying to do anything hard you know uh these better remember how to do huh yeah it's you're looking for the simplest of flies um uh, because, you know, it's, they don't have the skill sets. So, I mean, you're teaching them first time on how to do this. So it's not like, hey, we're going to do a clink hammer right off the bat. Mm -hmm. You might be doing San Juan worms, which is just taking chenille and wrapping it to a hook and it looks like a worm. Uh, so, you know, they're basic flies. Uh, if someone's in uh, JB for a while and we see them a lot, you know, and they've kind of done a couple lessons with us and then we could kind of pull them to a different table and kind of go a little bit more intermediate on some of the flies but some of the stuff we do are just simple you know you know basic stuff i think Boy what's that Boy 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 Boy. yeah 
it's you know woolly buggers foam beetles uh you know san juan worms they're all basic stuff you know you're just there trying to talk to them uh let them you know new skill and just kind of spending some time with them so i mean that's when we're there for an hour that's what we're doing even on a day trip if uh like to do a little bit of a barbecue i'd even be willing to to be the cook barbecue hot dogs or whatever yep I, and that's probably, i'd be willing to be the one to set aside to do it so yeah uh, and that's we're looking at the ninth you know i just gotta double check make sure i don't have you know i help with the foster kids that it's not that date and if it's because they might be the 15th and if it's the 15th we'll do the ninth for sure and then uh yeah, we do burgers and stuff like that unless somebody wants me to do, because I forgot right before I hear I was kick, cooking up chicken legs. So I got mm -hmm. chicken legs to eat for dinner. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll make it, it. That's more of a social. You know, the fishing is decent. If you're just there trying to have fun, you're going to love it. You know, if you're like, I'm looking for a record trout, there's you're not going to get there. This is more of a social event of just hanging out and, you know, you know. Sounds good. Everyone. <laughs> You catch over at Who's Law, though. I mean, it's it's kind of a funny little place. You don't know what you're gonna get. Yeah. Box of chocolates sometimes. <laughs> yeah, there's a peacock. There's peacock. There's a smallmouth bass. If we get rains beforehand and uh, Westover Farms gets flooded, those trout are gonna make their way down that dry creek, and you know we'll be picking up some trout and decent ones too. Um, and then while you're sitting there, you don't have to worry about them hurting you, but the gar will be cruising by. And those are kind of fun too. And that's, I saw some videos on how some people cook those up. So <laughs> I was even thinking about bringing a cast iron pan and seeing if I could cook those up. It was kind of neat. They basically said, if you like alligator tail, garfish tastes like alligator tail. So if you it like tastes, that. It tastes good if you put enough Cajun seasoning on it exactly and that's what it is is you know they kind of showed how you just cut the head off and then you almost need shears not scissors but shears to cut down the backbone and then there's two like back loins is what you take off those fish and maybe we can get bradley tut to bring you some yeah <laughs> but that's even you know another thing i want to try we had someone on I don't know if it was Bradley or not, who uh, was talking about uh, carp fishing around, you know, the Alton area. That would be kind of that, fun. That was me. Was it? Because I, yeah. I still, if I could find where to do it and all of a sudden I catch one, I know I'll spend more time there. So I got some grass carp in the pond that's over here by my place. And I, I, I saw one there. He was, he was freaking huge. He was, <laughs> he was dying. But now that I know they're in there, I've, got a new species i'm going to try to search for but i need to get figure out how to fish them there so yeah but I, I heard the carp is fun I, you hook into them and yeah. they take off running they said you know once you, they know they're hooked you're into your backing right away so that sounds like a lot of fun over in illinois they had a place called horseshoe lake that uh, when i was in my 20s my brother and i used to fish there and We'd cook those up, and and uh, my uh, uh, grandfather-in-law he uh, he thought it was uh, a crappie. Oh wow! And until I until I uh, told him it was carp, then he spit it out. <laughs> <laughs> I bet that I bet that I've never fished horseshoe lake. It'd be maybe there better be some grass carp in that. Yeah. So yeah, it's something I'd like to try. You know, I was lucky enough to catch a, a channel cat, but that'd almost be something if, you know, hey, we'll put the fly rods down if there's, you know, they stock channel cats somewhere because I love eating catfish. So it's, <laughs> I might do that. All right. Well, I'll yeah. check on the, oh, or yeah. the, the knife myself was scheduled, but I might be able to make that. Uh, the last part of July, I'm going to be out of town, though. Yeah. And again, it's we're all busy. We have family and other things going on. It's always great to see you, but we understand if you can't. But uh, 
Again, we'll be here next Monday for a Zoom call, but then that third will take off. So uh, I would do it from my cabin, but it's, it has very weak internet. You know, I forgot what my rate is here where I could probably have all my kids on their Xboxes and it wouldn't phase it. But out there, it's actually HughesNet where I it's a internet through a dish. So it's hard to say what I'll get. It's good enough for, you know, uh, checking emails and streaming maybe a movie <laughs> so all right i will have an email out to you guys we'll talk more about who's on uh, other things coming up so again if you need to get a hold of me please reach out and i will talk to you guys soon okay all right have Take a good care. weekend See everyone ready. take right. care okay bye now bye-bye right. see you